Hi everyone, I'm Robert and in this video I'm going to talk about both Zoids games on the GBA. Zoid Saga is an RPG best played by fans. The game is a Japan only game, which means that you can play the game only in Japanese, which makes it even harder to recommend. But what annoyed me the most was the gameplay, or better say the lack of gameplay. In the game you don't just run around and talk to people, the game is also a turn based RPG. Problem is, until you get into a fight, there is too much text you need to scroll by. That's why I said that you need to be a fan to enjoy the game. Turn based RPG lovers will find it annoying how much they have to wait until some battles appear. At least the battles are ok, it's nice that there are more than 100 zoid blueprints and more than 500 weapon combinations, you can have plenty of fun customizing your zoids in complicated ways, the combat has depth. As for the story, it takes place in between chaotic century and a new century zero, and follows Prince Atory of the Arcadia Kingdom. You are the prince of a kingdom in the planet Z and there's a small conflict between the kingdom and the empire. One day your kingdom is under attack by the empire's zoids, they take over your kingdom and plan to build the ultimate zoid by traveling in time to find parts. So you and your team travel back and forth in time to stop them. As I said, the game is best played by fans that also know Japanese. The game is hard to recommend even for turn based RPG fans because it feels like forever until you finally get into a fight. Zoid's Legacy, called Zoid Saga 2 in Japan, is a game you can play in English. The story is there like it should be in an RPG, but it doesn't feel this time like it's taking too much space. You still get plenty of battles in the mix, unlike in the first one where dialogue was taking too much. Though, because you get less dialogue, the story feels less emotional and very practical. The storytelling feels stiff. Wikipedia says that it's because the translation is mostly inaccurate, incorrect and nonsensical with numerous spelling and grammar errors, but after all the gameplay compromises for that. The gameplay has a lot of depth. Some complain that you have to read a lot in the menus until an attack, but that's the price to pay for the depth in the game. You get to a menu, from there you select a weapon, you can change the position of zoids on the field and it's nice that parts you can equip to your zoids can be seen during gameplay. There is more content too, now you get 151 zoid blueprints and the game takes you longer to finish, it takes you around 30 hours to finish the story alone. It takes you 30 hours to finish the story alone and even more hours if you want to tackle the challenges. Also the games have link cable capabilities, which means that you can switch out parts and battle friends. Story wise, and I'm going to read it from Wikipedia because I'm not a fan of the series, the world of Z is warped by an accident involving the time space transmission unit, merging the timelines so that the first three animes, Zoids vs, Legal Silver Beast and the events directly after the first Zoid Saga game are all occurring simultaneously. The game follows Zero and Yuno as they attempt to foil the, eff the efforts of the Backdraft group and the Terra Geist organization along with restoring the timelines to their original state. So as a conclusion, the games are best played by fans, but yet, even if the poorly executed stories are in the way of the fun, in the first one there is too much story and the poorly translated story in the second one gets to you, the gameplay is the true star, customization has a lot of depth, and battles are nice because you can use your customized zoids and see them in battle. Also the games have a lot to offer, so it's up to you what you think of the game, but my opinion is that the games remain best played only by fans.